Hello and welcome listeners to the very first podcast of Paramount Presents Cybersecurity for Beginners. Let me first start by introducing myself. My name is Ramya Menon. I am the digital marketing consultant at Paramount Computer Systems and uh, I'm also going to be the host of these podcasts. So, for those of you who are familiar with Paramount, what I'm going to say now may seem like a story you've heard before, but for the sake of our new followers and listeners who I'm going to be hoping will be plenty, uh, here's a little tidbit about us. Uh, so we're the regional leaders in information security in this market in the Middle East, and uh, we work with a whole gamut of industries, right, from hotels to technology companies and even the banking sectors. So since we've been around in the industry now for about 25 years, we decided that the best way to really celebrate this silver jubilee would be to get talking to everyone out there who is curious about cybersecurity. Uh, what it means for individuals, what it means for companies, and really why we should care about cybersecurity. So in this first session, we're going to be talking a little bit about careers in cybersecurity. The reason we picked up this topic was because there's a lot of conversation about the cybersecurity skills gap. So we decided it's best to talk to somebody who's actually involved in the whole recruitment process and has access to information relating to what it really takes to build a career in cybersecurity. So we have with us here today the head of human resources at Paramount, uh, Divya. Um, I'm going to pass the baton over to my colleague Divya now, and she's going to explain a little bit about the cybersecurity skills gap. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Divya to introduce herself to all of you guys. Thanks, Ramya. Hello, everyone. Hello, listeners. My name is Divya, and I've been with Paramount for over eight and a half years. You know. Uh, I lead a lot of HR initiatives which includes employee engagement, employee wellness, benefits, talent acquisition, of course I've been part of it, a lot of community initiatives and whatever little initiatives we put together as a team to put in a smile on people around us. So that's what we do at Paramount. Now to talk a bit about the skill gap in cyber security, yes there is certainly a demand for cyber security professionals especially in this part, in this region I would say. Today, the customer advances faster than, let's say, the rate at which cybersecurity professionals are advancing. And that is fundamentally where the challenge exists. There is clearly a mismatch with demand versus supply of cybersecurity professionals. Okay. So, uh, we've already established that there is a skill gap and there is clearly a need for cybersecurity professionals. So, in considering that, uh, are there any specific courses that you would recommend that people pursue uh, to make themselves the right fit for this uh, industry? Uh, uh, any certifications or any any qualifications that you, as a recruiter, look out for when uh, when you're uh, you know making these key decisions? Uh, good one, Ramya. A course or a certification in the domain somebody has chosen to explore should certainly help as long as it is just not for the sake of being certified without understanding the concepts. Mm -hmm. um, a better way to decide on certification will be what is it that the individual is aspiring to do in the next four to five years. Okay. The best way to rather go about it would be to see in, in what are the what are the areas or which are the domains that you would really want to invest your time and effort. Okay. Now, to answer your question specifically, CSX by Isaka is definitely a good starting point as it gives a fair view on various aspects of cybersecurity. There is a compliance angle to it, there is a regulatory angle to it, there is a technical angle to it apart from any other angles. Okay. Now, all the certifications like CSX practitioner or CSX specialist or experts are aligned with the globally accepted standards and frameworks including the NIST framework for improving critical infrastructure cybersecurity, ISO 27000 and of course the COVID-5 framework which makes it a good fit you know to see if you are really thinking of a career in in the space. Okay. If, uh, if a beginner or let's say somebody who's starting up a career is really thinking in those angles somebody has got this understanding right by doing the CSX exams which ideally they should you know after pursuing this exam the next question to be thought about is what would they be wanting to specialize in mm -hmm. if uh, somebody decides to specialize in let's say the technical aspects or somebody wants to take a route of a technical specialist then the recommended certifications will be something like a CISSP or an LPT or a CEH or other relevant certifications by SANS okay. on the contrary if somebody decides to be on the functional role then 
he or she could get into the solutioning space like a GRC or a risk management or anything related to the enterprise risk management module. Okay. Now, the third option could be to be in the compliance bit like somebody can go for a certification related to CSA, CGIT, C risks or others. Okay. Now, the point that has to be emphasized is certification alone can't be a, men- a benchmarking for anything. Okay. Uh, the concept of certification was for people to rather experience a complete life cycle to get an understanding and then apply in the real context. However, the shortcuts to rather clear the certifications have really spoiled the essence mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. Now, certification is construed very differently today. Certification is meant to meet somebody's personal aspirations to rather climb up the ladder yeah. or you know the customer expectations mm-hmm. and. Today we also see that some of the customers are being very choosy in in terms of selecting a candidate. They are insisting on certain certifications like a consultant should have a CISSP or a C-RISC specifically. Okay. Because it could be because it's adding on to the customer confidence as such. You know, it's it's pretty possible. It's credibility basically. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, um, clearly there are a few courses which add value. Uh, what we'll do for you guys is we will leave the links to these courses in our transcript. So. You can look it up and you can uh, get the information regarding these uh, certifications from those links. Uh, Now, moving on, we did discuss uh, certifications. Now, the other big area that people look at when it comes to recruitment is uh, skill sets. Um, What kind of skill sets are common to the people we recruit, if there are any, uh, Divya? Skill sets today is being perceived very differently. All the skill sets today are short-lived. We have to change as everything around us has changed. Everything around us has changed. Be technology, the technology has changed. The process and the approach around us has changed. Now, to elaborate, skill sets could be either a soft skill or a hard skill or a mix of both. Mm -hmm. Now, for most of the domains, it needn't be cybersecurity specific. Mm -hmm. Most of the domains today demand a combination of a soft skill and a hard skill for that matter. And that is typically what even we look for in Paramount and that's what we've been looking for all the time. Right. Ever since, you know, we've been in this space. Okay. So, uh, like with any other industry, the cybersecurity industry also is very dynamic. So, keeping yourself uh, dynamic and not restricting yourself to your uh, area of expertise is uh, is essential uh, in this, in this uh, industry right now. Now, um, let's move past the recruitment stage and get into the actual career now. How easy is it to progress uh, in your uh, career with cybersecurity? Um, is it easy or is it difficult or is there is there a certain point beyond which do people don't see any progress? Uh, what has been your uh, observations regarding this, Divya? Um, Ramya, progress typically would actually be a mix of what we spoke just now. Mm-hmm. Somebody should have the right skill set a mix of a soft and a hard skill Mm -hmm. and of course continuous learning I don't think that's an option to us anymore so as long as somebody is focusing on that I think he or she should be able to establish and you know have a a career progression for that matter there could be other uh, rather aligning factors to it but then it, it might be little subjective as you know the whole association of an employee with an employer could also be a contributing factor you know somebody could choose to work with a big force or somebody could choose to be with an SME and have an accelerated growth so it cannot be com- absolutely subcontracted as such but then of course this has a linkage with the kind of organization you have chosen to be in partnership with right. to establish your right. you know, end result right so uh, which which means that like any other career uh, with cybersecurity, there is obviously scope for progress, but it is very dependent on the individual, uh, right? Divya? that's that's yeah, clearly yeah. the yeah. So, considering all of these factors, um, would you think that the cybersecurity in the UAE has matured compared to other Middle Eastern countries uh, in terms of understanding from the customers end and also in terms of talent availability and so on and so forth? In terms of um, how cybersecurity has evolved in this region, anybody wanting a high level of protection in information assets will need the right combination of three things. One is people, process and technology. Mm-hmm. Now, the key is in this combination. Okay. The question to be asked is, do we have the combination right? Okay. Let us look at each of these units separately. 
UAE traditionally has been a country that has been the best in when it comes to attracting talent. We go out to evaluate people or we go we travel to India or rest of the countries to rather interview people. Mm-hmm. Whenever we talk or offer a position in UAE, the acceptance level from the candidates have been pretty high. Okay. People are excited and rather happy to be in this region mm-hmm. compared to any other GCC country. So my belief is typically of course there is something that the region is really attracting and is really good in attracting the you know talent, talent of course so when it comes to cyber security the most competent talent in cyber security in the region is available in ue mm-hmm. now moving to technology ue again is a region where people have been very eager in terms of experimenting with the latest technologies and there are lots of avenues for you know the technology vendors to advertise whatever new emerging technologies have been introduced to this market now because of these two aspects of ue all the major vendors have also focused in ue and they have used this country as a base in spite of the fact that the volume of business could be actually bigger elsewhere it right. you know be beat in saudi arabia or any other geography yeah. for that matter okay. now so as ue has the best of people the best of technologies and process could be because the government of ue has been mandating at c compliance or isr and nisa all the government entities are ensuring to comply with these standards okay now if but even before all these standards have been established you know uh, most of the government entities have been um, sticking on to the iso 27000 one standard okay. they've been endorsing to it big time okay. for that matter which means the balance of people process and technology at its best exist in ue is my personal view and it certainly is ahead from the rest of the geographies the rest of the countries right, rather, right, for that right. matter absolutely the country has a nice way of you know bringing in that experience at a certain price to this region mm-hmm. you know that's yeah that's how i can is. understand because there's been a lot of discussion even within the government about cyber security in fact it's one of the careers of the future as per the uae government so we've clearly established that there is uh, there is a push from this government itself for the cyber security industry as a whole in which brings me to our next question so what do you think uh, are the most common job roles that someone looking into a, ca- a career in cyber security should prepare for a uh, common job roles that somebody like us would be recruiting for or somebody like a vendor would be recruiting for and so on and so forth uh, common job roles available somebody could get started on a sales role uh, somebody could get started with, on the technology platform mm-hmm. or a process side of it or option 4 could be a r&d completely okay. you know on the research and development part if somebody is aspiring to be in sales and if they have deliberately put in their heads in the sand hoping that the storm would literally pass on and you know very soon witness a sobering truth you know that's going to be a very very unfortunate truth in the next couple of years i would right. say now forester is already forecasting that 22% of b2b sales jobs will be completely eliminated by 2020 mm-hmm. and according to gartner again 85% of transactions will be conducted without any human involvement right now that is a huge threat for anybody who is aspiring to be in sales or anybody yeah. who's rather thinking of rather being in sales role yeah sales people or any new professional really have two options you know either to shape up or to rather shape out you know yeah. that's clearly means that investing in self is is not a choice anymore yeah. you know that's that's simple now training of course would play an integral part here train retrain reinvent rather reinvent a new career path altogether is what i would suggest the only way to rather choose a platform is to constantly enhance the knowledge and skill get connected with thought leaders in social media or other platforms or uh, engaging with see that is typically because any customer would ideally be wanting to engage with a sales person who understands the domain right and the industry better than a very generic sales person okay so if the whole industry is heading in a specific direction mm-hmm. i think people aspiring a career should also take this into consideration that's bit about sales now for those keen on figuring out an option in technology or on the process side of information security it is recommended to avail the courses that we spoke about earlier 
and dive deep into the areas or the domain of their choice be it technology or yeah. the compliance or the process side of it at paramount we have a lot of options for that matter mm-hmm. uh, to get into a career it could be either in network security or the content security or security incident and event management space okay. someone could just start off their career as a security engineer or and rather choose to grow as a, a subject matter expert in the specific domain okay eventually can get into a managerial managerial role i would say a team uh, managing a team it could mm-hmm. be a small or large team mm-hmm. or you know if somebody had experienced let's say the technology long enough and somebody wants to move into the architecting or solutioning aspect of it again that's another option okay. the solutioning space of it or move into a pre sales consultant that could be another option i would say now what we have experienced is people who have moved in from the technical space to the solutioning space to sales space have been and of course somebody who re- who have really invested time and effort to acquire the fundamental selling skills mm. have been developed as a better sales person rather when it okay. comes to solution selling at least right same as with process side of it same as with compliance somebody could remain on the assessment side you do a you know a va or a pt or you know or somebody has somebody can choose to be in the compliance bit of it and you know progress as a as a compliance or a process consultant that is another option right. option 4 could be as i said of course there are lots of um, institutions there are lots of research and development um, wing so as we do in yes. coimbatore center of excellence so there are lots of uh, initiatives being carried out and somebody could figure out uh, uh, to get a get good start there that's another option all right so um just just to you know pinpoint a few things that we discussed there um if you're looking for a purely sales uh, role uh, maybe you need to reevaluate that because the whole uh, industry's approach to sales has completely changed and is going to change even further in the future um and if you're looking at roles which are more technology and uh, compliance related then you might have to look into the certifications that we talked about and of course there seem to be multiple roles that you could uh, find yourself in within these uh, areas and uh, as with any other growing industry r&d is a big big aspect of cyber security so if you are if you are having a research bent of mind maybe that's the job role for you right so um i think there are plenty of options options are in plenty it's just yeah. about picking and choosing the right one exactly on what you would want to do that's actually great news because uh, sometimes i think people who are not very well versed with the industry believe that there are maybe five roles that you know you can specialize with in cyber security so this really broadens the perspective for anybody who's looking for a career in cyber security and it also gives you a whole uh, range of options as to what you can choose from uh, right divya yeah. all right so i think we've covered quite a few of the burning issues uh, in cyber security today and uh, thank you so much divya for uh, enlightening thank us you so much ramya i i just hope the listeners have benefited you know from whatever little conversation we could have if there are more we'll be more than happy to address them that's yeah. great yes absolutely i am sure the listeners will uh, benefit uh, plenty from this divya and if you guys have any questions for us that you'd like us to uh, take up on our next sessions uh, please do leave us uh, your questions in in the comments and uh, stay tuned because we're going to be having regular podcasts on itunes soundcloud and uh, youtube i'm going to leave links for all of those in the description and uh, i'm also going to be leaving a transcript for you all to go through with links to like i said all the certifications and any other you know uh, reports that uh, divya talked about with gartner and so on and so That's forth true. so you guys can take a look at it and you can come back to us any any time with questions we are more than happy to talk to you guys so um this was our very first podcast so if you've had a few bumps along the way uh, please do excuse us uh, i'm sure we'll get into a more comfortable professional space in a bit uh, until then thank you so much for your patience and thank you so much for tuning in bye bye